Hi, this is Amy, and I want to talk to you today about getting started using Google Chrome. So you may be thinking, why do I need a course? Why do I need to watch a video about how to use a browser? It's just another way to get to the internet. And on one hand, you'd be right, but on the other hand, you would be missing so much if you treated Google Chrome just like any other browser. So I want to show you today how to get started with an empty account and fill it up with awesome applications and things to do, programs, and make it look maybe more like this. Which I think you'll agree looks a lot more exciting and inviting than this. So let's get started. I'm going to log in with a fake account because if I log in with my real Google account then you'll see the awesomeness that I've already created and we really want to start from scratch so you open Chrome and log in with your Gmail or Google Apps account and I'm gonna log in with a new account that will cause us to see some blank stuff here alright so here we are logged into our freshly minted Google account and you can see that we're on the apps page right down here we also have another option down at the bottom and that's the most visited page there's not a lot of data right now in our new account because we've just logged in but if you've been using this account on this computer for a while you may actually see your most frequently visited web pages right there so let's go back to our apps page and let's go into the Chrome Web Store. So inside the Chrome Web Store, I want to show you a few areas. When I take my own staff through this, one of the most important things I show them is the themes. And I know that there are a lot of people out there rolling their eyes right now, like who cares about the themes? But I'm telling you, this is really important to people. And if they've been using Internet Explorer, this is a whole new experience for them to be customizing and making this browser their own. So scroll through and find a theme you like and then resume this video. All right, so hopefully you found a great theme. Now we're going to open up a new tab up at the top and we're really going to see the full effect of the theme that we chose. So here's the one that I picked for this account and hopefully yours looks just as lovely as mine. So let's go back over to the Chrome Web Store again and let's close our theme tab here and let's go back to the home section here and take a look at what else we can find to benefit us in education. So you can see right over here on the left hand side we have an education area so you might want to take a look around in here and see what you want to add and for now we're going to go ahead and add or I'm going to add in this video this human explore the body in 3D. Now I was pretty excited when I found this because Google actually used to have a lab that looks remarkably like this app and um, I think that it may actually be that this company bought their code I'm not really sure but this is pretty cool so this is a good example of what kind of thing you can find for education in the App Store so I'm gonna go ahead and get started with this app and show you what it does alright so here we are with a skeletal system let's come over here and turn on the digestive system let's go ahead and zoom in and take a look at the parts from this perspective and I bet already you're kind of getting the point of what this app does so if you know an anatomy teacher then I bet this is going to be really exciting to that person there's even a way to take a snapshot down here but remember the reason we're here today is not to look at the liver but to check out the Chrome Web Store so let's head back over and close this out because I want to show you another section now I had not noticed this section lately but it's really important for when our kids take Chrome home and they don't have network access so take a look at the collections over here and then at the offline apps this gives us a great comprehensive set of what we can do on a Chromebook or using the Chrome browser without network and that's that's really important still for a lot of the kids where I work um, they go home to rural areas and they don't have network so I hope that helps too the next thing that I want to show you are how some applications that used to be websites, for example, this one was really important to my job, aviary.com or aviary for education, and when you go there you'll find that aviary is no longer going to be able to be available in this format. 
but what's great is a lot of applications that let us know they're going away are coming back in another form and I'm confused sometimes as to why they don't explain better how we're going to continue to get their applications. But Aviary is a good example of how this seems to be working all the time. And that's that I can go into the Chrome Web Store and I can still add these amazing applications. So I'm definitely going to add all of the Aviary tools. And then when I get finished doing that, I'm going to go back and add another one called Pick Monkey. So here's this great tool too. So let's take a look at how these tools work. So with this aviary tool and with PicMonkey, they're kind of similar. They're actually going to attach to my Google Drive. Now I know you have a Google Drive because just a minute ago you logged into Google using some account associated with Google. So lucky you, you've already got this. Now if you don't have it installed on your computer, that's okay. You might be using a public computer or a school computer. You might not want to install that, but that also does not keep you from using Google Drive. But watch what I can do. I'm going to take a graphic, a picture from my computer, and I'm going to drag it over into my Google Drive. All right, so you can see right over here, I've got a picture open and I'm going to take it and drag it and drop it into my Google Drive and you will see it uploading right down here. And now I'm going to be able to use Aviary to open that picture. All right, so my file is uploaded. Here it is and I'm going to give it a click. And now I'm going to choose File Open With and I'll pick Aviary and I'll allow access. All right, so now here's my picture open in Aviary. Let's say that I want to add an effect to my picture. Then I can do that right here in Aviary on my computer. This probably looks familiar to you. If you've ever used Instagram or something like that, it's a very similar type of format. It's really kind of hard to, for people to believe that this is free. It's really hard for me to believe it's free. So I can apply this effect now to my picture. Remember, this is all happening online. Take a, take a second to think about how amazing that is because that's amazing. So now I'm going to save it back to my Google Drive again. I've never touched the hard drive of my computer. So if I'm working at school and I don't have a user drive, I no longer have to have you know, a USB drive or something like that to carry around. This is so much better. So here we are. I get an option now to make Aviary for Google Drive the default. That sounds like a good idea, so I'll click OK. You can see my little icon there change. And I don't know, just, just revel for a minute in how amazing that is, because it's amazing. So I'm going to show you a couple of other little Chrome tricks that are important to me and how I work and might be important to you. One of them is that I can right click or two finger click if you're using a Mac on a tab and I can choose to pin the tab. Now Google Drive is a tab that I would keep pinned so I'm going to come over here and right click or two finger click on this tab and pin the tab. So you can see what happens the tab flies over to the left hand side and now I could even close my browser and open it back up and whatever I leave open in this pins tab will still be there when I come back. So just to be clear, this confused me for a long time. If I navigate to Mail in my Pins tab and I switch accounts, whatever's in that Pins tab is going to be there when I come back. So now here's my Mail account, my Google Drive, and uh-oh, I guess you just saw that. You can move them all around. So I'm going to show you how I really like to keep my browser. I'm going to be honest here. So what I really like to do is keep my browser like this. Here's my real browser I showed you a minute ago. So here's my one email account. Here's my other email account. Here's my Google Drive for work. And here's my Google Calendar. That's really how I keep my stuff organized all day long and um, how I like my browser to open up every single time. Now over to the right of this you can see I've got other tabs open like for example I don't know if you've checked out Fried Technology, but please do. It's my blog. I just worked on it today. Please check it out. 
But let's say I'm really, I'm finished working with all of these tabs over here, wonderful as they are, but I'm done and I want out of them. So what I'm going to do is come to my last pen tabbed and I'm going to right click or two finger click and I'm going to choose close tabs to the right and they're all going to go away and I'll be left just with my pen tabs. And let's say I really want my calendar over here in between, I can do that. Now, one more little trick. I've really been showing you all along, but I haven't talked about it. And that's using multiple logins of Chrome on the same computer. So this account right here, the one with the um, dark blue background, this is logged into my personal Gmail account. And for me, this is kind of my, my default home base. It's where I put all my, all my bookmarks, really. But a lot of people like to do this in a different way. A lot of people like to say, okay, I'm going to log in with my personal account on one Google Chrome window and my work account on the other one. And in that way, I'll keep all my bookmarks and everything else separate. So my friend Jessica Johnston, who is EdTech Chic online, taught me this trick, and it makes so much sense. So... If you want to set this up, at first you won't see this little switcher up here. So it's it's kind of confusing, I think, because if you haven't ever logged in as more than one person on the browser, then you won't even see this. So how you get started with this is you go to these three lines up here. Um, if you haven't closed Chrome in a while, you may still be seeing the wrench, but now it's it's transformed into these three lines. And let me move it over so that you can see the options I'm going to click on. So then we're going to go to Settings. And then right down here, you'll see the Users section. So what you want to do is add at least one more new user. So when you do that, then you can have multiple people, multiple accounts logged in on the same computer. This really works well for me and my family. Um, we found that on our home computer, it's kind of taxing on it, and it takes us a really long time to log off the account and log back on to another account. So now what we do is we just each have our Chrome open on our home computer and we just switch back and forth through Chrome so we don't have to log in and out on the machine since almost everything we do is online anyway. So there are so many more things I could show you and I would love to show you more things if you have questions about Chrome or want to do more advanced stuff like check out all these great extensions over here we could talk about please let me know I'd love to hear from you and I hope that helps you get started with Chrome and maybe learn something new. Have a great day. Bye-bye.